Hey guys, welcome back. This will be your uh, YouTube videos for 11.3 Shapes and Distributions. This one probably won't have as many um, clips to it. This is a lot of following in the book, but there are some things I notice in the book that I need to go over. So when you start off and they talk about your core vocabulary, the things you were supposed to know, histogram and frequency table. They don't have the definitions for these in the back of the book. You could look them up on Google, but I'm also going to talk about them as we go through. Okay. So I'm just going to go jump right in. We're looking at shapes of data distributions. So remember what that means. It's just how is the data spread out? Data is just a list of numbers that we, it's whatever, it can be whatever. It can be heights of people, whatever. How are the heights spread out? Okay. So let's just look down here. And let's pretend that that's what we're looking at, the heights of people, okay? If I say something is skewed left, what that means is most of the people are taller, but you have some, like, outliers on the left, okay? There aren't a lot of people over here, but there are some. So the data is skewed left, okay? So most of the people are tall, but the data is skewed left. If I looked at symmetric, Okay, well, I have as many tall people as short, but most people are right in the middle height. Okay, symmetric just means I have as many tall as I do short. Here, it meant I had more tall than I did short. Now, when I look at skewed right, most of the data is on the left. So here I have mainly shorter people, and then I have a couple tall people, but not that many. So you can also think of skewing like an outlier. We talked about that in the last sections. An outlier here would mean I have one person that's relatively short compared to everyone else. So this could be a basketball team, okay? Well, you got a lot of tall guys and you got the one short, short point guard. So that would skew the data left. You would have an outlier on here. This could just be like people in a classroom. You know, the data is pretty spread out. You have some tall people, you have some short people, but it's pretty uniform. Here, this could be... Um, for lack for something I can't think of really quick, jockeys. So most jockeys tend to be shorter, you know, riding horses. Um, so you have a lot more shorter people, but maybe you have one taller person. And that would be the outlier and it would be skewed right because the outlier is on the right. So that's one way to look at it. Where the outlier is, that is how the data is skewed. Now, the study tip they talk about down here. Flat or uniform and I'm going to switch over to the hover cam really quick. Sorry, it's going to take me a second. So what flat and uniform means is if you have, sorry, the camera's flopping it out. And I got to make sure the mirror effect is not on. So I think, oh, the mirror effect is on. Okay. So... If I had my distribution and it looked like this, and I'll even go one up a little bit more so it doesn't look perfect. If it is relatively all the same heights, we call this flat and it still is symmetric, okay? Because I can guarantee sometime they're going to throw this in on an error in ACT and you're going to be lost. You're like, well, is it skewed or is it symmetric? Or is it symmetric? This is considered symmetric because the left side and the right side actually look pretty identical, even though there is no curve to it, right? There is no curve to it. Now, one other little study tip while you're doing these things. If you have a hard time, because the way that they do the curves on this, you see how they kind of go from the left walls and then the right walls. What I like to do is I go from the midpoints, okay? It's not as neat on your paper, but let's say I had a bar graph like this, okay? If I just go from the middle of each part, you can see your curve, okay? You don't, it, just in case you're confused on whether I should use left wall, right wall, I just use the midpoints. Okay, that mean, what I mean is the middle of each rectangle. Now let's talk about what a histogram is, okay? What a histogram is, it's, it's a fancy name for a bar chart, but the bar chart, I apologize, I need to get a rag to wipe that. 
it is a bar chart that has a couple special things. So the walls have to be connected. Okay. So you see how all the walls are touching. The x-axis is going to be intervals. So let's say this is 0 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, 10 to 12, and then 13 to uh, 15. Okay? So this represents intervals of things. And this can be um, number of three-pointers made by players. This represents how often they did it or how many. So zero to three three-pointers made, two people. Four to six three-pointers made, three people. Seven to nine three-pointers made, four people. And then we're back here. That looks like three and a half, but let's just call it three because I was just making this up as I went. And then this would be two people made between 13 and 15 three-pointers. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense on how to read a uh, histogram. Remember, all it is, histogram is a fancy name for a bar chart, but it has intervals. Okay? Now, let's get back to looking at this. So hopefully this all makes sense here because this is going to be the first thing you're going to have to identify the name of the distribution. And all it does is it's telling you how is the data spread out. So if it's skewed left, we have an outlier on the left. Most of our data is on the right. Symmetric, spread out evenly, left and right. Skewed right, most of our data is on the left, and we have an outlier on the right. Okay. And now we can get into our examples. Okay, I'm actually going to use this as more of a click through example, but I want to talk about this. This is what a frequency table is. All it is, is a way to match up um, groups of people. So when I look at the top row, one through eight, five, what that means is five people. And then let's talk about what this problem was. This was a uh, the frequency table shows the number of raffle tickets sold by students in your grade. So what this means is five kids sold between one and eight tickets. We don't know exactly how many that were sold on this. We can take a stem and leaf plot and create a frequency table. Hopefully you remember stem and leaf would give you the exact numbers, okay? But we don't know exact numbers here. We don't need to know exact numbers. Sometimes that's not what we're worried about. We're looking at trends now. So five kids sold between one and eight, nine between nine and 16, 16 between 17 and 24, 25 kids sold between 25 and 32 tickets, 20 kids sold between 33 and 40 tickets, eight kids sold between 41 and 48, seven sold between 49 and 56, okay? So now if I'm gonna make this into a histogram, I am all set, but I wanna, I wanna talk about some words that we've used before domain and range. Okay. So it, it means a little bit different now, but when we look at the domain of this, they're going to be the groups. Okay. So I'm going to have to have a bar chart. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different bars. And that's a good rule of thumb. Try to stay between five and eight bars if you can, unless you have so much data. But if you get too many bars, you kind of lose the idea of what's actually going to happen. So between five and eight bars is pretty good rule of thumb. So right now, the frequency table oh, I apologize. I do not want him talking over me. I actually want to go through the click to example. Okay. So draw and label the axes. And I can do this with you. Actually, we have this here. So... If you were going to do this by hand, which I know some of you guys like to do, let me switch to my hover cam, okay? Let me make sure you can see that. Is this ever going to stop freaking out? Okay. So, first thing you want to do is label your axes. The groups are always the X. The frequency is always the Y, okay? So... I'm going to look, and again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups. 
So you want to break this up into seven equal parts. Okay. Now, depending on how good your handwriting is, I'm going to have to turn this. And I need to go 1 to 8, 9 to 16, 17 to 24, 25 to 32, 33 to 40, 41 to 48, 49 to 56. Okay. So now we have our x-axis. So now let's look at our y-axis, though. The highest frequency we see is 25. So here, it would not make sense to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because we would never have enough room on this graph. But if I have to get up to 25, let's think about what a good interval would be. If I went by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, nope, still not there. So unless I just want to keep experimenting, what I can do is say, okay, I need at least 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, 25 divided by 6, ah, that's a little bit more than uh, 4. So why don't I just go by 5s? Okay, you see how that was? That makes sense? 25 divided by 6 is 4 point something. So we're going to round up. So I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay? You could have picked other things. I'm going to try and zoom this in a little bit for you. Okay? You can pick other things. You see the computer does it a little bit nicer, but this is how I'm going to do mine. Okay? Now, we just need to go in and do our bars. Remember, the walls have to touch. So, 1 through 8 tickets sold, we had a frequency of 5. There's our first one. 9 through 16, we sold 9. So a little bit lower. And then we share a wall. 17 through 24 was 16. So a little bit above here. 25 through 32, 25. So now I'm all the way up here. Okay. 33 through 40, they sold 20. So I'm right on that line. 41 through 48, they only sold 8. So now I'm way back down here. Okay. 49 through 56, they sold 7. So slightly lower. Okay. And now that is creating a histogram. The only thing I need to make sure I do is I add in my labels. So this was number of tickets sold. And this was just, you can just label this frequency. Okay. And now we just took this table, which probably came from a stem and leaf plot, and created our histogram. And what it does is, isn't this a lot easier to see if it's symmetric or if it's skewed than it is just looking at the numbers? Some of you guys are going to be pretty slick, and you can look at the numbers and go, Small to big, back to small. Okay, and they're relatively even on each side. 25 is a peak. 16 and 20 aren't that different. 9 and 8 aren't that different. 5 and 7 aren't that different. But sometimes it's really hard to see. So you might just want to make the graph. Okay, so now let's go back to the click-through. They labeled everything. Their bar, theirs looked a lot like ours. And then we say the distribution is symmetric. And if you look at ours... I'm going to do that, but I'm just going to use the midpoints like I said I'm going to do. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. So if I try to connect the midpoints, I don't know how well you can see that on here, but we get a pretty symmetric curve. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this in no way is skewed one way or another. And if you look at it, there's no real outliers. So hopefully that explains how to create a stem and leaf plot. Or excuse me, hopefully that tells you how to create a histogram from a table. And I will continue on to example two in the next one.